Okay, dear colleagues, I'm going to talk about a surgical solution for complicated implant cases. My name is Tzvi Laster, and I'm very glad to show you some cases. Very often, we as implantologists encounter very, very complicated cases. And I would like to show you, to start with a case of anodontia that came to us to the hospital on uh, December 1999. A mother came with a 17 years old boy and asked me, please help me. All the other children are mocking my son, and calling him Donald Trump. And when we took x-rays, we saw the reason. Is a deciduous teeth and had only five permanent teeth, number 11, and, the, and all the first pre, uh, molars. And you can see what happened during the chewing. First, got a shape of a J. Undercut. We raise the flap, you can see here, big undercut. So what I did, I harvested bone from the uh, retomolar area here, and made two slots of grooves in between. No, tanto mando y hierto, chita. Wedged it in into the bone, creating a compartment. Jolly, jolly. A compartment. And I filled the depression with putty. Yeah. Put a membrane. And then I took a piece of bone. And here. And I used it. And I used it in ducts. So, we will fix the membrane in place. Mr. Romulo, I can hear you talking and it's disturbing. Mr. Romulo, the tax is in the membrane. The area is closed. This is the left side. You can see it here. Hello, Joe. Filled it up also with putty. And here you can see the result after three months. And you can see the difference only after filling the depression of the vestibulum, the shape of the lips, and compare to what we started. We started getting normal profile. So we started with this, and you can see here. Two wedges that I made the compartments here. And you can see it here, wedged into the bone. This is the left side without wedges. Bone is less, uh, uh, less uh, calcified. Here you can see on the CT the wedge into bone. After months, I inserted the implants into place. One implant in this area. Yeah. Lost this implant. And here you can see how we started with a profile like Donald Duck, and the end result with the teeth and nice profile. This is the end result. We started with this. We ended up with this happy guy. I must tell you that uh, when the mother understand at the first time when we inserted the final uh, restoration, she started to cry. And I must admit that even me and my assistant 
cried with her. It was such a happy moment for the mother and all of us. This is another case with a toffee posterior mandible. Many times we encounter this situation. You see the angulation of the crest. And we do not want the uh, implant go in this direction. We want the implant go straight. Like this. And not angulated like this. Again, I harvested from the Ritamoro area. I took. Actually, this is a case of uh, one of my uh, consultants, Faris Kablan. He uh, perfected the system here from one block, yes, long, longitudinal splitting. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, to prepare the wedge and to smooth it. And then on the recipient end, we make grooves. We can use them for grooves, high speed, like here, or low speed, or piezo. Then we tap in the edges. That they are fixed. It's very important to trim, to round the edges so it won't tear the soft tissue. Here, the bone wedges place creating multiple bone compartment. It will keep the membrane and keep the bone particles. Not to shift around. And another very important uh, matter is the free, tension free closure. We must take care so the closure will be completely and without any tension. Here you can see the parts was enough to use also on the right side. Again, Making grooves, tapping in the the parts of the wedges, rounded and rounding it here. You can see here, mm -hmm. filling bone in here and closing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, if the tension is too high and we do not want to close completely, then we pull fat from the buckle pad of fat. It closed safely and, uh, and isolated. And this is 10 days post-off. You can see here uneventful, uneventful recovery. And on the uh, X-ray, the ceramic X-ray, you can see here the donor site. On one donor site, we had enough bone wedges for all sides. And Three months post op, you can see the tissue here. You can see here. You can see the bone in between the bone wedges. And look how the crest becomes straightened. Compared to pre op, you can see the angulated crest. And here you can see the crest is straight. So, the implant, oh, no, that, so we opened here, you can see the some bone was missing. So after inserting the implant, we filled again with bone in this area. You can see here, the final, we started with this on the left side and look at the nice crest here. here. And on the right side, Look here, and with the final restoration. I do, I do, in fair dental uh, nerve later, uh, lateralization, we do it when the, there is not enough intermaxillary space and we cannot augment more bone.
to uh, enable inserting implants. In this case, we do a nerve lateralization. What I do, first I do like a circle, 270 degrees, and then I make holes according to the uh, CT and the, uh, the estimated area of the nerve. You can see here, then I complete the cuts. I remove the bone, and you can see here the nerve. The nerve is gently... You can see here. This case, 13 millimeter implants. The nerve is gently pulled out and two implants were inserted. The membrane and we cover it back. And you can see here, this way, long implants after nerve lateralization. This case, segmental osteotomy was published in the Journal of Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery in 2009. This lady came to me, where she's a teacher, and uh, told me that uh, she goes with a partial denture, but she cannot suffer it, and when she gets home, she puts it on the table, and the rest of the day she goes without the denture. You can see here, she lost mm -hmm. all her uh, alveolar crest. And it is quite a problem. You can see here, the residual. Oh, wide. It's wide, but very, very short. So, I exposed the area, mm -hmm. inserted on the floor of the nose to Howard's periosteum to support the lip to have retraction. And now I would like to draw your attention to the blood supply. If you notice, you see that on the crest, actually, we have very, very poor, very poor uh, blood supply. Look here, very poor blood supply. So in this case, I did my cut on the vestibulum, leaving the skirt to, uh, to be sure that my segment will have a, a, enough blood supply. Using a saw, the horizontal cut, with the saw, with holding the finger, you see here in the palate, I made the vertical cut. Then I fracture down the segment. Oh, okay. Because I had a very wide crest here, I made preparations, the soft tissue for implants, then I drilled with first drill to the segment. Before engaging, I pulled forward the segment and pulled down. You can see here the gap that all the scramer cilla was pulled forward this distance. And then I drilled into the floor of the nose to here. Then inserted the implants. You can see here the first implant, inserted the implant through the segment, then pulled forward the segment and inserted the uh, apex of the implant to the uh, floor of the nose. And you can see here the rest of the implant. Finishing here and here. Now you can see I am using implants to fix the segment in place and the optimal place because I pulled it down and forward. You can see it here. Then I use the sinus lift tray. Tray I designed for sinus lifting. You can see here, this part yes, is like yes. a cheek retractor, no, lip, lip retractor. Mm. Stays here, and you put the tip, 
the tip of the uh, tray on the rim of the opening of the window. And all you have to do is in uh, 30 seconds, just to shovel the bone particles into place. It shortens by 10 minutes the operation. You can see here, mm -hmm. that bone into place, and put it in place. And close it up. Sí. Mm -hmm. And this is five months post-op. Very easy because I left since I did the transmucosal implants. I left the healing cups and you can see them here. And look at the amount of bone we gain. This is the amount of bone. a malpositioned implants. A colleague of mine uh, referred this patient to me because he inserted the implant in the wrong angulation. Probably he was looking at his beautiful assistant instead of looking into the area of the operation. So we asked him to help him. So what I did, I took an impression and asked my technician to prepare an omnivac with teeth in place on the right position. So now I know where the implants should, should be. I made a segmental osteotomy again using the piezo here, the horizontal cap. Inserted to the implant, angulated a button. Then went to the piriform area where we know that there is bone. I took two pillars from the piriform area here and here, and then made the groove a hole on the uh, area above, the floor of the nose. You can see here the Omnivac. It was uh, to show me where to put and where to fix the segment in place so the implant will be in the right position. So I inserted the pillars that I cut. <laughs> Only that showed me where to put the segment in proper position. After that, I fixed it more with two mini plates, one here and one here. Mira, aquí le puse placas y tornillos. Eh? Inserted bone sí. into place. Se y le pone y sus injerto. Eso es reposicionamiento, lo mismo que yo hice con la otra. ¿eh? Pero fíjate, esa técnica es buena porque es imprescindible. Distracción de cero, distracción de osteogénesis. Distracción de osteogénesis es el proceso de new bone formation entre las surfaces de bone segments, gradualmente separadas por incremental. Como pueden ver aquí, tenemos dos zonas: una mineralización con los primarios de osteos. In between a, a fibrous interzone with collagen bundles 
it is directed on the direction of the destruction. And we are using the flexibility and elasticity of the fibrous zone to pull the two parts apart and to create a new bone in this area. The advantage of destruction osteogenesis is with the destruction, we have also visceral destruction. And it is skin, the mucosa, fascia, blood vessels, nerves, muscle, ligament, cartilage, and periosteum. They are all destructed with the destruction of the bone. And I designed a special crest expander. The crest expander is made of, uh, it's a 10 millimeter size, made of four arms here. And when we activated, the two, two arms are uh, pulled apart or pushed apart from the other two. So by that, I can push the bone fragment. And we have a special hole here for ligation for safety. And you can see here a case that looks like it's okay, but when you see the CT, you see it's a very narrow bone and it's not enough for doing any implants. So in this technique, all we have to do is only three incisions, two vertical incisions to decide the size of the part that is being distracted and a crystal incision. This operation, we do not separate the periosteum because the periosteum is the blood supplier also for the bone. And it is very important for the piece of bone that we are distracting that we'll have continuously blood supply. Then I do the cuts also with a special um, bear. It's a tungsten bear called Ariane by Densefly, and it is active, uh, acting part or cutting part only of four millimeters. So it's safe for the soft tissue. It doesn't catch the soft tissue. And I do my cuts with this faster than a piezo, 10 times faster. It takes 10 seconds to finish all the cuts. Then, Incomplete fracture of the fragment, you can see here. And you can see that I left this area intact. I went a little bit palatally. And then insert the wire, tap it, tap the, this, the expander into place, ligate it to the adjacent tooth, you can see here. And we start activating. The activation is starting after one week of latency. Okay. And the, the patient himself, according to the arrow in front of the mirror, every day he rotates the uh, he three quarters, three quarters of a, of a, of a turn. Three quarters of a turn, it means 0 0.6 millimeter each day. And you can see here, 10 days post activation or 17 days post off. Then 14 days of consolidation and we remove the destructor or the expander. And you can see here that we got also destruction osteogenesis and destruction Histiogenesis, yeah. And look at the soft tissue, and look at the nice attached gingiva that we are left with here on the buckle side. Then I use my tungsten bear, the Ariane, here yeah, to go through the soft tissue and insert the implants into place. And look, a 4.2 implant, I made the manage to insert into a 2.6 crest. Imagine the advantage. And all of this is in 45 days post-op only. 
I do not have to do any augmentation and wait four to six months for the augmentation. One month and a half after the operation, I insert the implants. And you can see here the implants in place. Then I made the sinus lift. Here yeah, you can see the sinus lift. And this is the panoramic x ray in place. So you can see here we started with this very narrow crest here. Yeah? And look at the width. And we have here immature woven bone here. Yeah. And actually, it's the ideal uh, stage of bone for implants because you insert the implant in the stage of starting and building new bone. So it will be build new bone around the implant and the procedure will be shorter. And this is the end result They're made by Dr. Eskovic and the technician Kern Yakov. And three years post-op and you can see here, no bone loss, three years. Bone loss. Now, with the lower jaw, many times a patient comes with a panoramic x ray, wants implants, and it looks like we have enough bone for the canal here, the ID canal. But when we see the CT, we see it's 2.8 or 2.5 only. We have to, uh, we have either to augment here and wait four to six months or to do crest widening. So we made the cuts, the bone cuts and insert the implants. And after two weeks of activation, look at the width of the crest. And look here, five weeks post-op, you see it. One week of latency, two weeks activation, and two weeks of consolidation. And pre-op we have here, and here we have after post-op. Look at the nice gingiva that we got after the destruction. And I must admit that I made a mistake because originally at the beginning, I thought I have enough here, I have enough attached gingiva and I didn't go with my cut close to the uh, molar. So in the end, you can see here, I insert, we started with this, and we managed to insert 4.2 implants. Look here, and this was my mistake. Here, we have a nice attached gingiva, and here, I have a little, not enough. I should have gone closer with my vertical cut here, so I could gain more attached gingiva. But anyway, the result was very good. Another crest destructor that I designed with, with Professor Momart is a segmental destructor, and it is bi-directional. When we turn this screw here, the segment goes up, if you rotate the bolt here, then the segment goes forward. You can see here, the segment was here, and you go upward and you go outside. Very small. And this is a case that was referred to me by a colleague from another city after they tried after an accident that the guy lost all his crest crystal bone, and they tried to um, add some ilia crest bone, but you can imagine that there was not enough soft tissue to cover and the operation failed. So he came to me and I did my bone cuts here, fragment, leaving a scratch here, you can see, and inserted the device. The device is very, very small. And look what I got with destruction. Seven days of latency, 
and 20 days activating and 30 days of consolidation. Look at the crest. And no problem with the soft tissue cover. I have a nice cover of the area. And now it is ready for implantation. Look, we started with this going up and outside. You can see. You can see here how it went forward. The segment went forward. Here it went upward. It is 16 millimeters upward. 16 millimeters, and here forward, and then we inserted implants and sent him back to his uh, surgeon, dental surgeon, to finish the work. So we started with this lack of soft tissue cover, and with a very, very short time, we managed to get this result. Now the smile osteotomy I learned from Professor Ole Jensen. He visited Israel, and you can see him here in the Dead Sea. In this opportunity, I invite you to come to Israel and enjoy the wonders of Israel. After we finish with this problem of Corona, you are all invited and be our guest, Cortex guest. And you can see that there are some cases that we cannot do any implantation. So what I did here, I made a cut to the cortical bone above, just above the mental nerve. Then finished the cut to the lingual side with the piezo. Completed the fracture, then fixed the segment lifted it up and uh, fixed the segment with a plate, a square plate, and filled up with bone. Here. Brought it up, and you can see here the left side. The left side was done by my uh, deputy, uh, Dr. Uh, Sami Poor. He tried it. This one on this side, and you can see he used the uh, one plate, and this is the end result. And look at the nice bone that we got. Very nice bone. And when we opened, you can see here, very nice bone. Look at the left side also. Very nice bone, looks like original. And inserted the implants. Another case that I did is uh, this guy suffered from cemento ossifying fibroma and treated in another hospital and the bone uh, that they um, augmented here Failed. The operation failed. You can see here the uh, agroma. So it failed because of lack of tissue. What I made, I used a, a balloon to expand, expand the soft tissue to make room enough. Then we managed to put a block with a good cover. We transfer the nerve to a uh, backward here, so there was no damage at all, and we managed to insert implants into place, and we have a very happy patient. Also, sometimes we have a, a well, so insufficient height on the frontal area. So we can do also like sinus lifting, we do flow of nose lifting. We raise the flow of nose and we raise the, the uh, it's even easier to separate the uh, mucosa, the nasal mucosa, to insert bone in place. 
then insert implants into place. So we start with such case, and you can see here we have a nice 13 millimeter implant for final restoration. Sometimes you can see here that sometimes the patient comes to us after a few years and he complains of way of pain in the vestibulum. And we see, we check that the implants on the neck are okay, no problem, no pain. But when you touch with your finger in the vestibulum in this area, they complain of pain. This is a sign of something happening on the apex. So what I did, I did a pisectomy to the implant. And I chopped and cleaned the area and problem was solved. And I have a chance to see a patient 10 years post-op after I did a pisectomy to the implant. And still the patient is very, very happy. You can see here. Now to another idea that I had to make silicone cover. It's a preformed silicone cover for the socket preservation. Instead of taking soft bone from the palate for socket preservation, I made two shapes of silicone prepared with holes, medical silicone for the front teeth and for the back teeth. And after filling the area, I suture the silicone in place. And after two weeks, I remove and I saved all the bone particles in place and I don't lose any bone at all. You can see here. Uh, before I finish, first of all, I want to thank you all that you joined us to this uh, webinar. I want to remind you, each country of where you are, you have very good maxillofacial surgeons in your country. And if you encounter a very complicated case, don't give up. Help your assistant, help, help your patient, and send him to this maxillofacial surgeon, and they will find the solution for this problem. You can see here the hospital, Korea hospital, where I used to work. Now I'm retired. It's near the Sea of Galilee in Israel. If you are far away, you can see the small dot here. This is tiny Israel. But you all, again, invited to our nice country, nice people. And again, come to Israel. We are planning very soon to have a very big conference, international conference with very, very famous lecturers. So please, you'll be noted and you are invited from the bottom of my heart. Thank you again and see you soon. Bye.